Hello friends, a lot of you have asked me regarding the issue of distraction at fracture site and whenever the compression is adequate, often the blade in TFNA is proud. So these are some issues which are frequently seen in comminuted hip fractures, sometimes the impacted hip fractures like the x-ray you are seeing here has posteromedial combination and there's some impaction as well. So when such a fracture is taken on a fracture table, obviously this side, the medial side is going to be distracted. Here you see this is an unstable injury. The proximal fragment is unstable in anteroposterior plane like a simple artery forceps can push the fragment posteriorly so you have to titrate the position so that it is perfectly aligned in ap as well as lateral view so after some struggle you will be able to align the fragments in a near appropriate position like here in ap view it seems to be aligned and this anterior hormone is helping in controlling the lateral view position that means the flexion of the proximal fragment has been controlled but you see after aligning it appropriately we see some distraction here the cortex here is visible on the proximal fragment but the cortex here at the fracture site is missing because of the combination the lt seems to be migrating proximally now when you push the trochar sleeve of the cephalometry screw or blade it is going to touch the lateral cortex like it is touching here and this is the limit till which the cephalometry blade can be pushed you can't push the blade more inside the blade will end up somewhere here so whenever you are placing the blade you have to ensure that the sleeve is touching the bone if it is not touching the bone then the measurement will be wrong and the blade is going to be proud so you have to ensure that the blade is almost flush with the lateral cortex so you have to ensure that the trochar sleeve is touching the lateral cortex now obviously there is some distraction here but it is very minimal and you can further improve it by doing just a simple maneuver of pushing the zig like here you see what we are doing we are simply pushing the zig more inwards and that is going to control the diaphyseal segment the diaphyseal segment will automatically move more medially and with that movement there will be reduction in the gap here like you see here the movements of the zig with the movement of the zig the zig is going inwards this proximal part of the nail is going slightly more medially and the shaft is also moving inwards and the gap we are seeing here is reducing with the push so this maneuver can be done before placement of the guide wire and that will reduce this gap here and with minimal gap the blade will come only slightly outwards and that will not be much symptomatic so here you see the gap was minimal and when we tried to pull the blade out in order to achieve fracticide compression the blade was proud outwards but it was only slightly proud it is not going to create much symptoms because it is going to be around 2 to 4 millimeter outwards that is not going to irritate the deep fascia or tensor facial artery. So for mildly distracted fractures, the migration of blade outwards in an attempt to achieve compression is not an issue. But when the gap is huge, like say it's more than 5 to 10 millimeter, then the blade is going to come out till here or till here. So that is going to create a problem. It is going to irritate the soft tissue there. And this is the initial AP view. Earlier it was flush but after achieving compression it is slightly outwards again not an issue because it is only slightly proud but in this case you see the distraction is quite high and we are inserting the blade the blade will be longer than the actual size that is required why because of the gap here and second thing you can't select a shorter blade because the blade will ultimately go till here only you can't sink the blade deep till here so that it can be pulled outwards for compression. It is not possible with the current instrumentation. The moment you place the blade till here and then try to achieve compression, the blade will be more proud and that is going to create symptom. The other issue is that which you might have encountered frequently in osteoporotic patients, the blade gets hold with impaction. That means when you hammer the blade inside the bone, it is going to get good hold. But when you try to distract or pull the blade outwards in osteoporotic bone, the blade may even come out easily and the hold of the blade is going to be compromised. So you are creating a void here when you are pulling the blade. So, and in reality, you are making the fracture more unstable because you are making the blade loosen up. So in this case, you see what is going to happen. We are inserting the blade. The blade is definitely going to be proud. It is going to be longer because of the distraction and because of the limitation of the instrumentation that you can't sink the blade deeper. And when we do this, see what is happening. We have inserted the blade. Now we are trying to gain the compression. But what is happening with gaining compression? The blade is actually getting pulled outwards. 
सो दैट इज़ द इशू वेन यू ट्राई टू गेन कंप्रेशन एट सम पॉइंट सम बोनी कॉन्टैक्ट हैपन्स इन द प्रोजनल पार्ट एंड आफ्टर दैट द ब्लेड कम्स आउट सो द ब्लेड हैज़ नाउ बिकम लूज इवन इफ यू ट्राई टू हैमर इट बैक what will happen there will be again distraction at the fracture side second thing the hold of the blade will be lost it will be going inside a void and the hold may not be the one which was there before trying to achieve compression now in geriatric patients why do we prefer blade first because of the impaction of the bone we are not going to drill the bone the impacted bone is strong second thing the holes you see here they are meant for cement augmentation and often with blades in osteoporotic patients we try to insert the cement through these holes but when the dissection is high like in this case i will recommend not to use the blade at all you saw in this example when we try to pull the blade it is going to become loose and the compression may also remain inadequate so that is something you should avoid what we can do like here in this case you see the dissection is high this patient is also geriatric patient but we have not used the blade what we did we tried to drill the bone only till here the remaining part was not drilled because the bone was protic we wanted to preserve as much bone as possible and you see the screw here the screw has tapering end that means the thread diameter here is shorter compared to the thread diameter here so when we try to insert the tfna screw here the screw will rotate and will gain good hold in this non ream bone if you are facing any difficulty then definitely you can ream it slightly further but try to preserve this bone bone which is close to the subcondral bone and then try to insert the screw with gentle rotation now this kind of fixation is gaining hold because of the pitch of the screw the bone is getting trapped inside the threads so the mechanism of blade and screw is totally different the screw is a good device to achieve compression and also the biggest advantage is that the screw can be inserted more deep that means it is not necessary to keep the screw end flush with the bone you can insert it till here as well that means the area where the hole of the cephalomedullary screw ends so you can place the screw till here and after that you try to achieve compression now when you try to achieve compression the ultimately the end of the screw will migrate from here till here so the issue of the proud screw will not be there unlike the blade the best you can achieve with the blade is to end the blade till here but when you want more compression you can end the screw till here so if the screw is here then you try to achieve compression the compression will be good and the problem of proud part of the blade will not be there you see what is happening we are achieving good compression and the screw is not very proud because we had inserted it slightly more deep slight opening is there but majority of the fracture is already compressed so whenever you are going to achieve compression in a wide gap fracture better to use the screw now some resident told me that they will be unable to perform cement augmentation but that is not so even with the screw you can perform cement augmentation like you have achieved the compression after that you can perform the cement augmentation the mechanism is same there are holes in this zone those holes are meant for cement spread only so you can do the same method as you do for the blade and that will provide you both the benefits that means you have achieved the compression and also you have done the cement augmentation so i hope this short video regarding the issues of wide gap at fracture site in hip fractures and its subsequent addressal using the undersized length screw will be helpful in your surgical planning and execution if you have any queries you can just put those in the comments thank you